Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the motion presented by the Honorable Prime Minister and Parliamentary Representative for Castries East, seeking the authorization of this Honorable House to borrow an amount of U.S. $102,128,294 from the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China to provide budgetary support for the fiscal year 2022-2023. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the people of St. Lucia for their patience in waiting for the government to secure the funding to implement many of the programs outlined in the budget address of 26 April 2022 presented by the Honorable Prime Minister. The theme for the budget is empowering our people, transforming our economy. And we cannot empower our people and transform the economy without the necessary resources. So Mr. Speaker, it would be unfair to the Prime Minister and the other honorable members in this house, for me, as parliamentary representative for Babono, not to support the budget and the mechanisms available to finance this budget. Mr. Speaker, when I used to watch on television presentations in the House of Assembly, I used to hear on the opposite side. But since I became a parliamentarian, I realized there is no opposite side. Because if I say opposite side, I'm seeing members of the government sitting there. So we just have one side. We have a parliament all inclusive, a, a, gov a government of national, uni national unity. Mr. Speaker, I say this, Mr. Speaker, before I explain a little further on why I see the justification for this borrowing. When my colleague on this side, not opposite, is still with us, speak to no difference in this borrowing to what the last government used to do. There is no difference, Mr. Speaker, because when you borrow, you borrow. But the difference is, what will the money be used for? That's where the difference is. How will the money be used? And who will participate in the decision on how the money is used? That is the difference. Mr. Speaker, the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2022-23 is very clear on how this government plans to raise the necessary revenue to finance the budget. For example, Mr. Speaker, let us have a quick review of how the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance plan to finance the budget. Mr. Speaker, it is important for you to note that this budget was passed on the 26th day of April 2022. And this is the first time the Prime Minister is coming to this house to borrow money to finance the budget. That is after seven months, Mr. Speaker. I admire the skillful manner in which the captain of the ship has navigated in these turbulent waters of economic tidal wave. Mr. Speaker, the budget speaks to external borrowing. And in the estimates quoted, $425,387,524. Bonds, $79,000,000. $795,995. Mr. 
The estimates also speak to tax revenue, money government is expected to collect from tax. One billion, 16 million, 435,979 dollars. Non-tax revenue, 133 million, 888,321 dollars giving a total of one billion one hundred and fifty million three hundred and twenty four thousand three hundred dollars the budget spoke to capital revenue of ten million six hundred and eighty eight thousand two hundred dollars grants to the tune of one hundred and seventy six million six hundred and eighty thousand 881 and a total expenditure of 1,842,842 million dollars. The budget also speaks to capital expenditure of 493 million dollars. Projects to the tune of $24,837,100. Recurrent expenditure, $1,349,610,600. Mr. Speaker, when you speak to this money, we have to find out where is that money coming from. And when you look at the revenue that government collects on a regular basis, we have to borrow in order to fulfill the needs of the people of St. Lucia. Salaries alone, Mr. Speaker, amounts to $358,492,445. Salaries and allowances, Forty-four million three hundred and forty-one thousand seven hundred and fifty-six dollars. Wages, fifty-three million eight hundred and thirteen thousand nine hundred and forty-six dollars. Wages and allowances, twenty-two million thirty thousand eight hundred and forty-four dollars, which covers thirty-three point nine nine percent of the budget. Mr. Speaker, I represent the Ministry of the Public Service, Home Affairs, Labor, and Gender Affairs. And government has to service that department. And under the Public Service and Gender Affairs, government has to raise $48,583,100. Under Home Affairs, and the budget for national security is also there, amounts to $120,000,000, $1,600. On the Department of Labor, $2,594,100. On the Home Affairs and National Security, the recurrent expenditure, which is what government has to service on a monthly basis, is $120,000,000. $11,600. On capital expenditure, the government has to raise $9,914,900. The public service and gender recurrent expenditure is $48,583,100. And on capital expenditure, $9,000,000. $671,400. And the Department of Labor, $2,594,100. And on projects, we have $25,000. Mr. Speaker, I raise these figures so that the St. Lucian public will understand the amount of money that government would need to keep this country going. And therefore, it can be collected through tax. Some people may give us some gifts called grants, and government has to borrow for us to provide the services that our people need. Mr. Speaker, 
We have promised and we have started to deliver to the people of St. Lucia. Do you know that this government inherited a huge debt which the taxpayers in St. Lucia have to pay? The value of borrowing, Mr. Speaker, is to ensure that you live decades ahead of your time and enjoy the future before you actually earn it. The revenue to live the lifestyle that you want. And that goes very simple, where you borrow money from the bank to build a nice house. You are living in a very modern house, using toilet facilities, air condition, and everything, and you have not worked for it. So you are living ahead of your time. What this does, you have to work as time goes by to repay that debt. But you are already enjoying what you would have to work for. It will take decades for you to do that. And Mr. Speaker, I understand the economics of borrowing because I know when I built my home 30 years ago, I only finished pay it after 20 years. But I had already enjoyed everything that a house after building it for 20 years would have given. Some people will tell you, Mr. Speaker, that they have to save their little money. And I saw a friend of mine save money and she never lived to enjoy the house because she worked so hard and she did not have time to leave the house. So when this government borrows money, is to ensure that St. Lucians enjoy a quality of life long before they have earned the money. Mr. Speaker, the most important thing is to ensure that there is transparency, accountability, and public participation in the way the government is using the money it borrows. That is the difference between this government and the last government. This government is committed to account for the money we are borrowing on behalf of the people of St. Lucia. Monies we borrow and a huge debt is there for us to pay. And that is from the taxpayers. And this is what St. Lucians must understand, that any time bo government borrows, it is on their behalf because they will be the ones enjoying it. Their business is to ensure that the money is used for the purpose, and that is our responsibility. Mr. Speaker, are you aware that this government has agreed to pay the majestic and liat workers? Workers, these workers are saying thanks to the government. The Prime Minister and his team of competent men and women in this house who had the courage to settle this long outstanding matter. Mr. Speaker, especially our women who toil in that majestic place for years. There is a lady who worked for 30 something years and she got nothing after the industry was closed. And after almost 18 years, this government had the courage to secure the money to give these people their compensation. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is putting money so that we can get soft loans and grants for our people to start their little business. Mr. Speaker, we are using the money in the country to help innovative upskilling programs after COVID. Mr. Speaker, the government has to get money to enhance security and promote justice. We are providing vehicles, training, repairing police station, fire stations, so that our men and women who work in the protective services will have good conditions of service. That is what government borrow money for. Mr. Speaker, this government paid salary increase to public servants, which was promised to them by the last government. Mr. Speaker, government will be paying millions of dollars this month 
to public servants in back pay owed to them by the last government. Mr. Speaker, on page 64 of this budget, and as a typical principal and teacher, I go by the books. I go by the books. And the Labour Party had a manifesto, and the Prime Minister used it as his Bible. And he asked us to follow because we promised the people to deliver. And we have to follow what we promised them. The Prime Minister prepared his budget. And we can take this budget and start ticking what have we done for the people. And not going around and doing things. We have a mandate to fulfill and we will follow the books. Mr. Speaker, on page 64, of the budget address, the government has been providing relief measures to citizens in this country. Well, Mr. Speaker, as we speak right now, I know that the Babono constituency and all constituencies in St. Lucia are getting a good grooming exercise. When I passed this morning, I saw haircuts going on and beard cutting up where they are cleaning Babolo. I mean, you can just go down and wipe the place. It's already so clean. That is what the government used the money for. And the people will be paid, they will have a good Christmas, and they will be able to take care of the family. The money is going back in the people's pocket. Not to create a few millionaires, so later they can have their business. They can have their big business. They can open their business and big, big ceremony. La chance pour mettre à poche cette mission. Pour yo prendre quelque chose, yo, prendre quelque famille, yo, éducation, yo, yo, mais manger à sous table là, c'est pas pour faire yon do trois monde go venir millionnaire. Et qu'après yo venir millionnaire, Mister Speaker, yo ka ouvre go business. Et yo ka mener pret là, vin Benin. Poor father. Mister Speaker. This money which is being borrowed today, I want the constituents of Barbado and all constituencies in the other constituencies to understand that government is actually fulfilling its mandate and to ensure that they are taken care of. Mr. Speaker, I did not promise to do a lot of things for the people in Barbado. Because when you put things in writing, they hold you to it. And in that manifesto, we identify five things we said we would be doing in Babylon. And when the Prime Minister borrows money, I know part of it will reach the Babylon constituency. And one of the things we will work towards, we have five years, we have a year, and almost a year and a half gone already. According to the Prime Minister, we have an expiry date. So we are not there forever. Whatever we have to do, let us do it for the people. One, repurpose on youth space at the Babolo Primary School to increase access to early childhood education and adult education program, Mr. Speaker. And I got a letter from the SSDF that they are getting ready to start the work. Thank you. The work is beginning. We promise the Babolo people, Mr. Speaker, to establish an ecotourism project campaign um, which will include turtle watching, outdoor camping, bird watching, and hiking in the Debara community. That's the first area we start in. And Minister of Tourism told me send my proposals in. Am I correct, brother? Open. You can open. So there we are seeing, Mr. Speaker. The monies are going in that direction. Mr. Speaker, provide Wi-Fi access to the communities in the constituency. And so far, Mr. Speaker, we have been promised 270 homes in Babolo will get Wi-Fi. And so far, they have started. And all constituencies are benefiting from this book, which we call the Flow Bundle. And people who did not have access to internet, they are already getting access to internet. This is what government puts its money to. Provide access to land under a land rationalization program for housing and agriculture. 
The people in the Talvan area, they are celebrating the government for giving them land they have been living on for over 30 years. And now they can have title to the land, Mr. Speaker. Redevelop Babono Central with the view of improving access to services provided by the multipurpose center. Right now, we have developed a vision to upgrade Babono Central to a little town. And Mr. Speaker, when I saw that, I got goosebumps. So in January, we'll be unveiling this big vision that we have for the Babono Central. Part of the money that government borrows will find its way into the constituency where the people will get some satisfaction. Mr. Speaker, we were successful in bringing back Babono Day after 16 years, Mr. Speaker. That is a community that was always dying and we are bringing it back to life. It was a huge success and the big success about it is that it was incident free thanks to the police and the security man. Mr. Speaker, some of the money borrowed have to find its way to the Babono constituency to improve the quality of life for our people. Mr. Speaker, I want to applaud my cabinet colleagues in the manner in which they are carrying out their work with a passion for their constituencies and their respective ministries. Every single minister is putting 110% effort and sweat to get the job done. Mr. Speaker, we have a hard taskmaster. This Prime Minister is not easy, but we are responding with team effort. I'm very confident that we are going through. And if he could have held on for seven months, he was afraid. They say Philip Pierre, Philip Pierre. Instead of Philip Pierre, they were saying Philip Pierre. He was afraid to, of the Madi Pwete. But now it's not Madi Pwete. It's Madi Banu in Punusafei by Semuna, Mr. Speaker. That is what it is. No, not Pwete, Banu for us to do what we have to do for the people. And Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> with the additional financial resources, I am reassured that we will not disappoint our people in this country. Mr. Speaker, I am left with no choice but to give 110 percent support to this motion in supporting the Prime Minister borrowing US 102 million 128,294 dollars to finance the 2022-2023 budget. I thank you Mr. Speaker.